Welcome back to Flight Sim with the Rude Man. We are sitting in, um, what the heck was the name of this place? Lake City. Lake City, Florida. We're in the northern area, northeast area, and we're going to be heading uh, out of Florida, going west, and I'm going to end up today at Pensacola, which is right on the border of of, uh, of western Florida. So um, we're going to try to do this within a couple hours. I'm trying to keep these things down in time. So let's go in and get our plane started. I haven't put anything in, so I'll do that. But first of all, let's just get going here. Uh, let's fuel up before we do anything else. It's a little after one-ish here in the afternoon. It's Easter Sunday. So let's start off by putting some fuel on. And then we're going to turn the battery on. We're going to put a little extra fuel in. Let's turn the ignition on. And we're going to turn on avionics and start the engine. Before we do, let's, uh, let's turn some lights on. Put the strobe and the nav lights on. So people know that we're starting the plane up and then we'll start her up. All right, so while that's starting up, I'm going to go ahead and put our route in, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, getting ready to go. Uh, let's take a look at the route. Uh, KLCQ, that's where we're at. We're going to be heading actually west. But if we look at the, at the map here, well, going the wrong way. Let's pull it out. All right, you can see we're, we're heading west. This is the peninsula, so this would be south. We're heading west uh, out of Florida to here, here, and then here. So that's Pensacola. And I wanted to get up a little bit above it here so that we can actually come in closer to a, uh, a runway. So that's what we're going to do. Let's uh, pull this back down and uh, get ready to take off let's see we're going to need to throw some lights on i don't think we need that let's put um let's see here what are we looking for wing light turn that on uh Okay, and then um, let's go down here, and we can set that to normal. We can set that to normal, and we'll leave everything else alone. I don't think we need the battery, so we turn that to normal. And um, let's get ready to go. All right, so I didn't set the barometer. Let's do that real quick. We're at 29.92, we're going to 30.15 before we take off. We need to set this to, to GPS. And then let's go over here. We're gonna set the altitude up a little bit. I'm gonna start at six, cause I don't know what the clouds are doing out there. We can take a quick look, but let me just set this to six first. In preparation of takeoff, we're going to put the flight directors on. We'll do the rest after we get up in the air. And let me see if I can get a weather report here where we're at. Okay. 
Okay, we got a little bit of wind. Not a whole lot. Looks like um, seven knots. And it's overcast at 15,000 feet. All right, so a little bit of wind, not to anything too terrible. Nothing that's going to stop us. So uh, let's get started. All right, take the brake off. Head out to the runway. I think this is where we came in yesterday. And um, we're going to be, man, <clears throat> there's not a lot of wind, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the wind. I think I'll be fine. It, if you notice the wind's coming from the right, we should be taking off that way, but I'd have to go clear down the other end of the runway. I think we'll be fine. It's just a sim. It's not real life. I'm not too concerned. It's, well, that's... That's not much of a runway, is it? Is that enough room? Whoa. I think it is. I think it is. So let's put a flap down. Get inside. And let's see if we can get this thing in the air. I don't know. I might run out of runway. Uh, I think I'll be okay. Yeah, we're up. No problems. We got positive climb. Let's head to the right a little bit because that's where the autopilot wants me to go. Come around this way. Get back on our track of where we need to be. And it is, they weren't kidding, it is overcast. Cannon Creek Air Park. Sweet. Well, if we crash now, it's going to be in water, so. That's the AP shutting off because I'm flying it manually right now. I may have to go up above 6,000 feet. Uh, right now we're at 19. I'm going to stay down a little bit low until I get this thing straightened out. Well, let's say, go say goodbye to um, Lake City. Yeah, if I don't go up, I'm going to be in the thick of this. So I'm going to... Hang on a second. Let me just get lined up because there's Lake City. I need to get lined up with our course.
This might be soup for a while. All right, let's get in here. Let's see if I can link it up. Get climbed up out of the soup. Set up in the seat a little bit. Hey, blue skies. Sweet. But this isn't going to be very good for tourism. That's a blanket. Now what I can do is if it turns out that this is going to be like this, I can always change it from live weather and just put a few clouds in so we've got something to see below us. Um, it's not, it's not the best choice, but it might be a better choice so that we can see. I don't know how long this is going to go. This might go all the way because we are kind of following the coastline. So I can show you what we're doing. Okay, so we just left uh, the city, Lake City. We're just going to be going over the top of Florida. This, this mark right here is Florida. All, and we're going to go all the way up here to Whiteling and, uh, and right there and then down to Pensacola. So that's where we're going to end up, which is right on the border of Florida. So then our next trip will take us on further west. So we're still going to be flying Florida today. Moss Meadows. <clears throat> That's an unusual looking cloud right there. It looks like somebody blew a bomb off and it's just kind of fizzling out. <laughs> what a thing to say, huh? Yeah, it looks overcast everywhere. This might be the weather we're looking at for today. If that's the case, what I can do is come up here and we could just take it off of real time of live weather not real time off of live weather and we could choose there's clear skies we could do few clouds or we can do uh, scattered clouds okay so cl scattered clouds might be a little bit closer to reality than few clouds. That's gonna give us the best view. Let me go ahead and see what weather is like in, in front of us. I'm gonna go about halfway down our trip and see what the weather's like, okay? It's overcast. Let's go all the way to uh, Pensacola. And Pensacola is overcast. So the weather the whole trip, which is going to amount to about 250, 260 miles, the whole trip is gonna be a blanket of fog that you can't see through. So I think I'm going to uh, just stick with this one right here, this choice, so that we can at least see the countryside. 
So just sit back, grab yourself something cold or hot to drink, and enjoy the ride. So up, up above us, I think we've got Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. Let me pull a map up and see what that looks like. It's taking a while to load. I, I kind of screwed up. I chose a map of the whole USA, uh, a road map. So that's going to be a while loading. Let me try a different request. Say just a map of southern USA. All right. That beep, beep, beep was... Uh, my phone. I think I might have just lost my sensor. Let's see here. Yeah, it's just telling me I've had my um, blood sugar monitor in my arm. I have a sensor that goes in my arm and it links to my phone so I can tell what my blood sugars are all the time and it's telling me that uh, it lasts about two weeks. Well, it, it lasts exactly two weeks and I've got about an hour before it's done and I have to put a new one in, so that's what that beep, beep, beep was. Cooksey Brothers. What the hell is that? Okay, so when we came down from, say, the New York area, we came down through the Carolinas, Georgia, West Virginia, Virginia, and then down into Florida. So I didn't say that right. It, first of all, we started off in, in uh, Virginia, then West Virginia, down into the two Carolinas. Um, I think we kind of bypassed a little of Tennessee and Kentucky and Tennessee. And then from the Carolinas, we came down into Georgia and then into Florida. Now we're heading out of Florida west and just to the north of... Um, of us is Georgia and about about a when we get about halfway we'll be at the border of Alabama so to the north of our trip today is going to be Georgia and Alabama <clears throat> and then on our next flight We're going to be heading through, let's see if I can get a better view of this map, Dowling Park. And if, you, if you're listening to my voice, you can tell I'm kind of at the tail end of a cold. Um, I don't have the sore throat anymore. I lost that a day or two ago, but I still have that, <clears throat> you know, that thickness in my throat that has to be cleared once in a while. So the next trip when we leave Pensacola is going to be through uh, the tail of Alabama, very short flight, 
the tail of uh, the southern tail of Mississippi and then into Louisiana and then beyond. Fort Atkinson Plantation Air Park. I don't know what that means. Is it still a point? Did they still call the farms plantations? Why was a farm designated as a plantation? I don't know. It sounds like a name from a bygone age to me, but I suppose if you're somebody that owned one, You might want to stick with uh, with history. <clears throat> All right, plantation versus a farm. What's the difference? A plantation is an estate where large amounts of crops would typically be grown. Sounds like a farm, doesn't it? There would generally be one large house where the owner of the plantation lived. Again, sounds like a farm. On the other hand, farms are usually smaller and don't constitute an entire estate. Well, what are you calling an estate? Okay, a plantation is a large estate. A farm is a smaller piece of land. A plantation, only commercial crops are grown. Where on a farm, crops can be for commercial or private use. So on a farm, you can have a garden. Grow yourself some potatoes and carrots to eat in a family uh, kitchen, I guess. On a plantation, you can't have that. Uh, generally, more profit is made from a plantation because more crops are produced. Less profit is usually made from a farm because fewer crops are produced. That's kind of relative if you ask me. Uh, a farm is a farm if it produces and sells a thousand dollars or more worth of farmed goods within the year. Farms may contain livestock such as pigs and cows. They could also include crops like fruits and vegetables and all products can be sold or used privately. How many acres is considered a farm? Farms approximately 231 acres, and the average uh, large U.S. farm is 1,420 acres. The main thing that matters is how much money is made. Another critical factor is the products produced and sold. So one of the questions on plantations is, do plantations still exist? Plantations still exist for tourists to visit. Although they exist in a museum capacity, none of them still produce cash crops in abundance. It's believed that most uh, uh, plantations were shut down when the U.S. introduced the 13th Amendment. But it did take a while for them to shut down afterward. So, according to this, there really are no more plantations except for as museums. Uh, that would be tobacco, cotton, rice, um, 
tea, bananas, coffee, and sugar cane. In the United States, it's basically rice, tobacco, maybe uh, cotton. But then, like they said, that that's that's old. Uh, that's old. Plantations don't exist. It says. So there, there is an expl- explanation for an estate. An estate is usually a large uh, piece of land, you know, owned by a family, a wealthy family, obviously, uh, and doesn't mean that they have to grow anything on it. Um, it says it doesn't necessarily have to contain any crops or livestock. Uh, a wealthy family usually just owns an estate, so. It's just a big piece of land, I guess. Anyway, the, the I think in this article I just read, uh, they buried they buried uh, the do plantation still exist. That should have been at the very top, in my opinion, because it says no, they don't. They're museums now. So there you go. Everything you needed to know in more than a nutshell. Look, there's Pratt over on the right. So I want to see if I can come down. Let's uh, drop this thing. See if I can get under those clouds. Let's start off with 4,500 feet. So let's let's come down. So these are fake <laughs> fake clouds. It's a game. These are fake clouds. So um, without live live weather, uh, let me see if I can get underneath of them, and so we can get a better look at what's underneath down on the ground. Hokey dody, hokey dody, hokey dody. Where are we at? We're um, maybe a fifth of the way on our trip. So I'm gonna wait until I get down to the 4,500 feet so that I'm sure that I'm not heading for the ground. I want it to level off. Let's see, I'm speeding a little bit. Let me drop back the throttle just a hair. We're 176. I don't want to be that high. I put it back to 170. Uh, of course, because I dropped the nose, that's why it sped up. Pull the throttle back so I'm still in the green. And I'm tagged at 166. We're at 4,500 feet. Check the barometer. The barometer has changed from uh, 30 to 29. So that puts us a little bit lower than 4,500 feet and it'll climb back to 4,500 in a second here. I'm gonna go put on a, a pot of hot water for tea. I'll be right back.
All righty, Lamont. All right, let's check the speed. We're down to 158. What's over there? Some airstrip. Uh, turkey scratch. Turkey scratch plantation, it says. Well, that's pretty interesting. This is funny because it looks like the clouds came down with me when I dropped. Kind of strange. Let's, uh... Let's drop to 35. Put a flow, slow drop in. A slow drip. I'm trying to get underneath these clouds, and I don't know if I actually can, since they're fake clouds, if you will. Uh, let's see, what do we got in front of us? There's a Skyhawk right in front of us, just off to the right. I can't see it. I can see it on the map. What's he flying? He's flying... Well, it doesn't tell me. He's 13 nautical miles in front of me, and he's flying at 6,700 feet, so he's above me. I'm, I'm playing tourist today. One of these days, I uh, might try to uh, start flying on a live server. I'm not quite ready for that yet. I think this afternoon I'm going to try a couple of different planes. I'm still I'm still trying new planes whenever I get a chance just to experience a different plane. I kind of I kind of miss, I don't know why. Look at the now that's kind of cool. That looks like it's just been harvested. That land underneath us there. I wonder why they go in that kind of a pattern like that. They they harvest like I do. You've seen me start in the middle of the field, work my way around. I just like doing things different once in a while. Was this a? I don't know how to, if that's how you pronounce that. Charlotte's Field. Uh, is that close to Charlotte's Web? Walk me what? Wakina? That's the name of a town. That's the name of a town. There are a lot of areas that have uh, that have uh, those kinds of names. Where's did I just see a there? There's a plane right there. That's the one I was looking at. It's a, uh, what did I say it was? A Skyhawk? Yeah, that's it right there. It's one I saw on the map. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I was talking about there's a lot of places in the U.S. that have, uh, that have uh, Native American names. And I'm not talking about Charlotte's Field. I'm talking about those other two. Or Angel's Field. But there was a couple that back there that I couldn't pronounce very easily. There's one that's prob probably Native American. We're coming up on Tallahassee. And uh, the Tallahassee Airport's going to be just off to the left of us here. 
But I just kind of flew right into the clouds, didn't I? I could take the clouds clear out by a clear sky. I kind of hate to do that. I'm getting... Okay, there's Tallahassee International right in front of us. Uh, I kind of hate to do that because I'm getting used to real weather now. I flew a trip the other night where it was nighttime, raining like hell. I couldn't see a damn thing. And I did perfectly fine. It was in this plane right here. Twelve miles to Tallahassee International. Now remember, we're still in Florida. We're going to be uh, in in Florida the whole trip today. So I was kind of one. I was kind of hoping to see some some Florida grapefruit or Florida orange juice farms, orchards. Uh, Florida used to be known for its orange juice. Fresh Florida orange juice every morning instead of coffee. Or with your breakfast or however. So there's the Tallahassee Airport. Where is Tallahassee? We got a little bit of a city below us here. And it looks like a little bit over there, a couple suburbs. And there's something over there. There's some green grass at home right there underneath us. A little patch of civilization. Well, is that Tallahassee? I wouldn't think it'd be too far away from the airport. If if you know, if this is Tallahassee, it's kind of spread out, isn't it? Into little areas. It looks like it has a pretty decent sized airport. On the map, it shows Tallahassee as being pretty spread out. 
it takes up a lot of area. Up north, we're not going to see it, but up north right on the border of Georgia is Chattahoochee. Way down south on the Chattahoochee. Something, something, something with a hoochie coochie. I don't know what a hoochie coochie is. I got a pretty good idea. Must be about nap time. I'm yawning like crazy. Dogwood Farm. There's a Tallahassee commercial, so that kind of tells you that this whole area must be considered Tallahassee. And as I said on the map, it looks like it's spread out over uh, Hell's Half Acre. I'm going to check on the hot water. I'm back. I went to uh, put a tea bag in the hot water and brew it up. And I found right next to the pot a, a container of uh, oatmeal raisin cookies. Mmm, my favorite. This is pretty much the halfway mark for us. Just eyeballing the map. A little bit under, a little bit under. I 
again, Florida in its water. That would be a pretty good sized lake from up here. If we're looking at it from, you can see how big it is. If you take a look at the city we just passed over and kind of place it over that lake, that's a pretty good sized lake. The perspective from up here is unreal. You'll probably consider that I'm that I'm teasing, but from here, from here, it looks like the uh, the Earth is flat, although it doesn't really, because it looks like there's a curve. Even at this height, we're not very high. You know, people can believe what they want. They think it's a flat earth, more power to them. It just gives us something to, um, to have a good laugh about. And when I say that, I don't mean a nasty laugh, you know, like, ah, ha, ha, you guys are all, yeah, no, it's just a, a good-natured laugh over it. It's kind of like the people that believe, there's people that believe that we didn't uh, go to the moon and people that believe we did. I don't know. I wasn't actually on the moon to see us there. Um, I guess the way I look at it is... What, what, what if we did? What if we didn't? What's is that going to change anything from what we're looking at now and in, in the world? I don't know. It just it just gives people something to. Well, this is your side of the room, and that's my side of the room, and you can't cross that line. We seem to want to do that with everything nowadays. I don't understand. We fought so hard to just be human beings together on the world, in the world, and it just seems like it's going backwards. Every, everybody wants to pigeonhole everything now, and there's a name for that, a label for that. place for you, a place for me, and they don't have a place at all over there. There's a place called Panama City Beach. Huh. Wonder what the beaches of um, Florida look like. I, I, I wasn't ever at the beach. I'm at the look. And then we're getting bogged in by fog again. What the heck? Well, there you go. We'll clear up for a minute. Man, that cookie was good. I probably shouldn't have eaten it. I have to be careful what I eat. Um... I had a bowl of oatmeal this morning, and the problem is Carol puts raisins in it to give it a little sweetness and flavor. 
Oh my god, those raisins just kill me. So my blood pressure, uh, my blood pressure, my blood sugars kind of blew out the sky and then fortunately they came right back down. I'm a heavily medicated. We got a desert below us. It sure looks like it, doesn't it? Look like a mini miniature desert down here. There's a hammock. That's a little airport. At first, I said I thought it said Hancock, but I think it's hammock. My hammock's kind of shot. I need a new one. Of course, it hasn't stopped raining in two weeks. It's been raining here for two weeks. And I looked at the forecast this morning, and we got at least, you know, they only forecast about a week at a time. And I looked at the next week's forecast from today, and it's pretty much rain. Righty, let's uh, clean off a spot on my desk for a cup of a tea that's coming, and I'll be right back. Hey, we're still in the air. What's that? Cattle Creek Ranch? I'm guessing that's a cattle ranch. Or a creek ranch. I don't know. Uh, Calhoun. I saw that on the map. Calhoun. And Clarksville. Take the first train to Clarksville. I'll meet you in the morning. <coughs> Actually, I got that wrong. It was the last train to Clarksville. You go monkeys. There's only one left. Only one monkey left alive. Mike Nesmith passed away about a year or so ago. 
He was the rich one. Well, he wasn't. His mother was. His mother invented uh, liquid paper, I think it was. And he inherited all that money. Wow, that looks like a burned out place down there. That little area right there looks pretty dark. Calhoun! Oh my God, that tea is hot. Hot, 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 hot. looking for Calhoun on the map here. I saw it on my flight map, but I'm looking for it on a regular uh, road map. <coughs> there it is. It's in uh, Blounston, Blounston County, County, Haven County. I can't tell. Maybe it's Calhoun County. Maybe it's not a city. No, it was an airport, wasn't it? Steep Head Farm. Huh? I can't read that one. Ron Weed? Is that a name? Or is there a weed called Ron. Oh, I see. Uh, Calhoun C.O. Calhoun County. So Cal Calhoun is the county that we're in. So, Blountston and Haven must be uh, cities. <laughs> to the south of us, there's a place called Mexico Beach in Florida. And it's all the way south. Run for the border. I was looking for something the other night, and I found my little dog. I have one of those little chihuahua... Uh, dogs that uh, when you push a button it goes uh, Yokito Taco Bell <laughs> it's still got batteries in it I, I pushed the button a little dog says Yokito Taco Bell I also found a gorilla named uh, Rodney that I used to have sitting on my computer just a little gray gorilla and he had uh, his uh, index finger sticking out and you could either stick it in his mouth or stick it in his belly button why I don't know they just waited and made him I guess yeah I can't remember but you might be able to stick it in his ear too I might have to go find him oh there he is yeah, he's got. You can stick it, in, stick his finger in his ear too, if you want to. I didn't check his bottom, and I'm not gonna. So don't ask. There's a lake over there. Pretty, pretty round. I wonder if they call it round lake. Round to ground. 
Marinair Airfield is a little bitty dirt one, it looks like. Well, it could be grass. If it is, the grass needs a little water. Orange Hill, head for the hills. Whoa, that cleared up fast. That was actually kind of weird. Lakes all over the place. Okay, so we got some rural area here. It's uh, the reason I say it's rural is because it looks like. I, well, I don't see any houses, but it looks like they're getting ready to build some. I mean, look, they've got it all uh, streets and alleys in, but I don't see any buildings. That's kind of strange. Usually, if they own a, a big property, like let's say they owned all of this in here, they would only put roads in as they needed them, as they're putting houses in. Um, if you if you did if you did own all that property, unless you have got more money than than cents, it costs you a lot of money to put all those roads in before you put any houses in to sell. Like I say, generally, they start off with a like a neighborhood. They'll put the roads in for that, put some houses in, sell them. That gives them enough money to put the next neighborhood in. Well, all righty then. I sure didn't see any houses. I don't know. Seems like we lost civilization here for a while. I mean, there's some kind of roads down there, but they don't look... <clears throat> they don't look real occupado. Well, there's a big freeway running through here. 
What's that over there? Crystal Village. Vernon over there, that's a town. <clears throat> a little one. Oh, man, I just got in a sneezing fit. Say, it's Easter Sunday. Hey, there's a place called Redhead. I know, <clears throat> I know a little gal we call Redhead. And you know who you are. Um, so it's Easter Sunday, and I see an article in an online, online news uh, format that uh, the headline is uh, about the resurrection. It shows a, a big stone coming across uh, an enclosure like a cave, or it's supposed to be a tomb. <clears throat> and the headline says, if it's true, belief in the resurrection, uh, resurrection ought to be life-changing. So <clears throat> you're talking about beliefs. I think everybody should believe. I know I, I kind of believe in almost everything, only in the <clears throat> in the respect that um, that um, I'm curious. You say you believe in something. Show me what you got. I'm curious. You know, is it something or is it nothing? A lot of times the things that people believe in and they say yeah, I got proof well show us what is it and then when they when they start talking they'll talk for an hour and never have anything uh, that's what I didn't like about a lot of these uh, shows that they have about ghost busting on TV they would go into a place that was presumably haunted and they never had anything they, they would say oh did you hear that no I didn't actually oh did you see what that was no I didn't see anything um, see that spot flying through the air? Yeah, it's probably a dirt, you know, a molecule of dirt with light, you know, beaming off of it. But but they never came up with anything. You know, they would they would play a recording and say that that said that said we're all going to die a bloody death. And then you listen to it and it sounds like well that didn't sound like what you said it sounded like. Um, so. If you tell me that you believe in ghosts, I, I believe you. Uh, I'm curious. I want to know more. I don't believe in all of that stuff on TV. I think it's all hogwash. That doesn't mean I don't believe that there might be a, a some, some such as a ghost or a spirit. I know I've seen one myself, but I still am skeptical. But the thing about belief in is this, and why I say everybody should believe in something... If you don't believe in anything, what's the point of anything? And if you if you uh, if you ask the question, why should I believe? Like, like let's say we're talking about today's Easter and we're talking about the resurrection. Why should I believe that? Well, why shouldn't you? Um, 
is believing going to cost you anything? It costs you nothing to believe in something. And, uh, but not believing in it and then, and then eventually finding out it's true is going to cost you. So why not believe in something that doesn't cost you anything and hedge your bets? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, why should you smile at something instead of frown at it, you know? What does frowning do for you, except for make you angry or sad or in a bad mood or, you know? What does it hurt to smile? Doesn't hurt anything, make you feel better. Why you want to feel down all the time? I know people that are like that. They're just down all the time. They'll walk outside and it's raining and they'll start crying like, oh my God, why is it always raining when I want to go outside? Yeah, it started just because you're going outside. Everything's about them. I actually know people like that and it's kind of depressing to be around them all the time. Now, that being said, I get a little bit irritated about people that are always positive. <laughs> There should be a happy medium in there someplace. You know, every once in a while, a day's got to have some rain. It, it's going to happen. Um, but I do, I, I do know some people that were so, so up about everything that you just want to smack them down. Tell them, just sit down and shut up. You know, they can't. <laughs> there's There's got to be some, you know, give and take on that a little bit. Just a little bit. Even that being said, I'd rather be around somebody that's positive than somebody that's negative. There's Jay's farm right there. <clears throat> I got a friend night named Jay that I haven't seen in years. Wonder what he's up to. He was my best man at my wedding. And I haven't seen him for years and years and years. I hope he's okay. Okay, we're getting kind of close. Now, if you remember, I set a spot up here, which is where we're going straight ahead. Look at straight ahead here. I set a point, place up here, and then we're going to take a left and then another left to come down to uh, Pensacola. Because Pensacola, if I flew straight to it, uh, I wasn't going to line up with the airstrip. So I decided to go up to a couple little airports take a turn and come down so I would kind of be kind of lined up to the airstrip so we'll see how that goes so if you see me turning to the left you'll know I'm getting close to Pensacola uh, Definite Definite Springs. Wow, that's a mouthful. There's Duggar, Duggar Field. Duggar Field, that sounds familiar. Is it Duggar or Duggar? I'd say Duggar. That's a big freeway down there. We've actually uh, came across several of those. Pretty good sized roads. And stuff a doodle doo. There's Cedar Lane. I actually live on Cedar Avenue in my hometown. And we were 7.95 miles away, and that's my address. It's not, actually. I do live on Cedar Avenue, though. And at the end of Cedar Avenue is Cedar Loop. Uh, 
All right, there is a uh, airport off to the right coming ahead here. We just passed Joy Farms. There's an airport called Nice Niceville Niceville Airport off to the right. There's a Skyhawk on the same tra- trajectory that we're on ahead of me. But he's at 700 feet and he's coming into an airport, so he's landing because he's not on a par- He's not on the same course I'm on now. He's, he took a 45 degree turn towards an airport. Airport. Well, all right. There's Niceville. I want to see what Niceville looks like. That looks like a huge baseball diamond down below us here. All right, what's off to the left there? Niceville Airport. Well, we got Niceville, Niceville Airport, and there's two of them. W- weird. This, Niceville must be very nice. They're doubling up on airfields. a lot of dirt places around here. It's all that water around. You'd think that there'd be some green grass down there. I haven't seen Niceville yet. Why does it need two airports? Or is it off in the distance there? It might be. All I've seen is these big dead looking areas. Is that farmland down there? I bet it is. They need some water on it, though. Looks like Montana. Montana didn't have any water from their farms. Now, I don't know if that's true statewide. Well, we've still got a little ways to go. we got about a fourth of our trip to go. Duke Field. Duke Nukem Field. working my way towards my birthday got some big decisions to make on my birthday in regards to the future my YouTube page my live streams that kind of thing 
Um, I wasn't looking forward to this year, but the closer I get to it, the uh, the more I'm getting ready for it, kind of mentally. got to the right over here there's Bob Sykes little airport little airstrip uh, triple B air park triple B would you want to fly into triple B or triple A I'm thinking I'd go for the A I don't want to land with the B team hey say Duke Field is a pretty good sized airport there Right airport versus the wrong one. Yeah, I was looking at pictures from 50 years ago, um, getting ready for Easter. And in a way, it saddened me. Um, the picture was New York, I believe. And they showed a nighttime picture of New York. The skyscraper skylight, you know, skyline, nighttime. And office buildings had office lights turned on in a manner that formed a cross. And this wasn't just one building. It was a whole bunch of buildings across the New York skyline at night. And I thought that's the difference between 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and today. There's no way anybody would do that now. They'd be afraid of getting canceled. And I, it really saddened me. It's Easter. It's Easter. Of course, back then, 98% of Americans believed in uh, a higher being, and now I think it's 81%. That's just normal, normal people living in the United States, not our politicians, or the people that run the country, or the one percenters. That's just the working people. They also had statistics as to those people that were in the government as far as uh, Congress and the Senate and what statistics and what numbers were what between parties of uh, belief. You have to kind of measure that with a grain of salt in my mind because a lot of times their beliefs are based on uh, whether they're making money or power, gaining money or power. 
<clears throat> if believing is going to gain them money and power, then they'll come out and say, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I know that's cynical, but hey, it's life. Another little airfield below us, and we got one coming up. George T. McCutcheon. I wonder what the real weather's looking like. Let's test that out. Let me go swap back out to live weather and see what it does. Yeah, I kind of figured it was going to be the whole way. I kind of figured that. It's more farmland underneath us. There's a lot of trees, though. If you've noticed, we've flown over a lot of uh, forested area. Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. And tons. That's one thing about this microphone. If I just go off to the side a little bit, it really changes. My old microphone would pick me up wherever I was talking. I didn't have to face it. Like if I turned my head to the right to look at something on another PC and move my head instead of just my eyes, you could still hear me perfectly fine. Now if I do it, my voice gets weaker. I have to be right in front of the microphone. Now there's ways to adjust that, but I haven't done it. Hey look, there's Harold. Hello, Harold. What town is that? Oh, it looks like Harold is the town. It must be the airport that is McCutcheon. I just noticed that on my throttle, I've got a stopwatch. I didn't know that. Santa Rosa, N-O-L-F. Don't know what that means, N-O-L-F. Seven miles away. So we're look I'm looking at... Um... All right. That widening field there, that's our turn. So when we get to that widening field, we're going to take a turn to the left. And we're going to be headed... Peter Prince Field? I don't know what that is. Santa Rosa. Uh, we're going to take a right. I'm sorry. We're going to take a left. And head towards the ocean. So Pensacola is off in that direction. Indeed, indeed. Under your seats, we're gonna we're gonna curve out here.
So one of those airports out that way, I think it might be that one. We're going to go from this airport to, to one down here and then into Pensacola. We're going to buzz this one. One of them is, uh, might not be an airport. It, one of them was a weather station, but I think there's an airport attached to it. So we'll find out after we make this turn. So this is Whiting Field. That one is also Whiting Field South. This is Whiting Field so North. Interesting. The one on the other one looks bigger. It's funny because it looks like the runways are wider and a bit longer. And one is one is tarmac and one looks appears to be cement. All right, here we are into our turn. There's Point Baker. That's not the one that we're lined up with. It looks like we're lined up with that Nolf one. And it's a so Nolf I think is a weather is a weather station. So that must be Nolf right there that we're lined up with. Yeah, Spencer Nolf. Okay, that's a different Nolf than we had back over that way. That was Santa Rosa. This is Spencer. Uh, I think that's that's something to do with national weather. All right, well, we're getting close. Uh, once we get through Spencer, I might take it off of cruise control and try to line up with the runway. Pen, uh, the Pensacola looked like it's right on the water, but we'll find out. It's got to be right. It's got to be right on the water there, like right there maybe. That one's too close. I think it's that one over there, and it, or it could be that one over there, because we just have a slight turn. So I bet it's that one uh, to the right and not that one out in, in left field there. I think it's this one that we're going to. So once I hit this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it out of cruise control. And then we'll run into the um, glide slope. And, and we're not using the glide scope the, or the glide path. We're not using it. I'm just using it as a visual to line me up with the runway. Wow, that looks like, what is that? It's kind of like the Star of David down there. That's weird. I don't understand what that is. All right, so it's it's going to want to turn, so I'm going to take it out of, of uh, autopilot, and we're going to kind of kind of fly it in here. Get a little bit closer to the controls here. So, what are we about nine miles out or so? There should be a plane right in front of me. What the hell's he doing? Uh, he's at 7,000 feet. He's over us by a little bit. So I might come down. Let me drop her down a little bit. So, yeah, I'm thinking that's our airport right there. Let's see. We're not close enough. To... Look at that. 
big buildings of some kind down there. All right, I'm drifting. Don't drift. And I might be wrong. That other one might be the one we're looking at. Let me kind of turn in here. I'm lost. I don't see that. It's one of those. I don't know which one. It's one of those. Oh, is it that one over there? Oh, it is. It's that strip right down below us. I overshot it. Ferry pass. All right, let's bring her down. Yeah, 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 I know I'm speeding. Let me cut this back and we'll put a, we'll put a flap down. And then push down, push down. Pensacola International, that's the one, that's the one. Okay, I put my nose down and it, and it sped me up quite a bit, made me over speed. So I put a flap down to slow it down. And let's see if we can get lined up before we get in there. Say hello to the ocean. Looks like a pretty good size uh, in length airstrip. So I don't think I have to use more than one flap, although I might want to use one to slow down, but I'm slowing down just fine, I think. So we'll just, at this point, let's try to line it up. Bring it down, head them up, move them out. Raw hide. got a corded headset on and I don't it's always in my way of my throttle my hands almost wrapped around it and it interferes with my throttle I should start I normally use a, a, a battery operated a wireless headset and I don't have it on right at the moment now I, I'm getting off course Dang it. All right, I'm not using any brakes. I'm going to let it run out here a little bit. Put some brakes on now. Slow it down. I think I got another turn coming here. Maybe not. Is that a turn? Yeah, okay. I got another turn. Not quite sure which way to go. Well, I'm still on the runway. Let me take a look around. There's a tower over there, but there's planes over there. So I don't want to be lonely, so I'm going to go where the planes are. Pensacola, and there's literally no wind, which is good. Might have been having trouble coming down after I was on the ground. I kind of, kind of went off course a little bit, but that's that's because I didn't throw any brakes on and I didn't try to steer it 
I was going to try to let it run out, but uh, and and then at the last second, you know, after I started moving off to the right of the airstrip, I decided, well, I better I better put a little left rudder in there. But you have to remember that with a propeller, uh, the plane naturally goes to one side, whichever way the propeller is spinning. You know, the inertia from the propeller is gonna is gonna make you go left or right, depending on again which way the thing is spinning and so you have to steer i mean you can't just let it go and expect it to go straight and that's what i kind of did after i hit the ground i kind of just let let go of the stick and i started going to the right so uh, i finally grabbed the rudder and started steering it a little bit put a little brake on okay Let's go and nosy up to one of these planes here. Put my flap up. Turbo prop. Got a little turbo prop there. All righty, throw a brake on. So here we are, Pensacola. We got company, a few planes. It looks like they're all turbo props. Uh, that one is, this one is. I think that one might be. Okay, we got a couple of smaller planes over here. We're not the only one. So let's go in and give ourselves a shutdown. Alright, so let's turn the lights out. And uh, let's turn the um, starter off. Went the wrong way. <laughs> Went the wrong way. Let's turn those things off. I'm not hitting them, am I? All right, let's jump up above here and cut the fuel. Get this thing shut down. Okay, we are down and dusted. Hope you had fun. The next trip, like I said, we're going to be leaving Florida. We're on the border right now. And we're going to be going west. We're going to go out of Florida into Mississippi, I think. And uh, we'll go from there. Hope you had fun. Hope to see you then. Ta-ta for now.